Good afternoon and welcome to the symphonic band portion of the 2018 Poda Band Concert. My name is Sarah Neely and I am the president of Poda. We'd like to thank the University of Oklahoma for hosting us here this weekend. It's been a fabulous experience and a beautiful hall. It's a wonderful opportunity for our students to be here, so we're very appreciative of their space. If you would, take a moment, please, and check your cell phones and electronic devices to make sure that they are on silent and don't have any alarms set so that we can have a performance without interruption. These folks have been working very hard this weekend. If you would like to purchase a CD or DVD of the performance, those will be available in the lobby after the performance and at the end of the concert. Uh, also, at the end of the performance, we'll be taking a photo, and those will be available as well. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the chairperson for the 2018 Symphonic Band, the director of bands at Norman High School, Mr. Joel Deardorff. Good afternoon. It has been a pleasure to be a part of the CODA experience this year. You guys have been fabulous students who worked tremendously hard, and I know you're going to be treated with their performance today. Let me first off by uh, introducing our, our conductor today. Mr. Doug Henderson is the Associate Director of Bands and the Director of the Cowboy Marching Band at Oklahoma State University. Dr. Henderson conducts the Symphonic Band, teaches courses in music education, and oversees all instrumental music education student teachers. Dr. Henderson holds degrees from the University of Texas and Michigan State University. He has guest conducted in clinic groups across the United States, Austria, and Japan. His wealth of expertise and musical passion has made for an incredible experience for the students. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage Dr. Doug Henderson and the Coda Symphonic Band.
seventh grade through their senior year. It's quite an accomplishment. Um, I have a plaque for them, but we have almost no room to maneuver. So as soon as you stand here, recognize you need the plaque from the after. Um, so I'm going to announce this for students. They're going to stand, and then if we could all give them a hearty round of applause once all four of us stand in. V. Wynn, Dalton Skinner, Jasmine Wright, and Lillian Moxley. Would you give them a big round of applause?
Is this on? Yeah. Good evening, or afternoon rather. Um, I'm Doug Henderson, and it's been my great honor to conduct these wonderful young students and musicians this, this uh, the past couple of days. Um, the progress they've made from yesterday morning until right now is unbelievable. Some of the music that we played on uh, Friday morning was kind of barely recognizable, and then, by the, and then Friday afternoon it sounded better, and then this morning it was just like they, they ate something magic for dinner and, and slept really well, and everything sounded so much better. Um, and so it, it really has been a great privilege of mine to work with them. And, and all, I, I can't thank you enough to all of the wonderful high school band directors who have helped prepare them, and also middle school band directors who taught them before, um, as well as the OU band staff, which, who has been so helpful and accommodating during this entire um, process. And so thank you to all of those folks. Um, I want to tell you just a brief little bit about the program that we're playing here, because I know you, you can see the program, but not any kind of program notes. The first piece, Mother Earth, was written by, it was composed by David Mislanka, and Mr. Mislanka died this past August, and um, he is a huge figure in the world of band. He wrote, he wrote music of all levels, from music for young band all the way up to several symphonies for band, which are some of the most difficult pieces in our repertoire that exist. Um, and he was a truly remarkable voice, and that piece, Mother Earth, just to give you a little insight into that, it had some challenge. We kind of called it our science project because reading it, it looks like it's really slow, but actually every single measure, every beat that I was giving was an entire measure. And so their music was flying by really fast and learning to kind of read that and change gears mentally from the way we're used to reading music was a little bit of a, that's presented a little bit of a challenge at first, but as you can tell here, the students really um, stepped up to that and we're super proud of them for doing that. The next piece on the program that we played, the um, Nothing Gold Can Stay, is something that is a piece that's really, truly special to me for several reasons. One of them is, I helped commission it, what, a, a group of us, a consortium of us who were former students of Dr. Kevin Sedatov, who's the um, director of bands at Michigan State University, that's where I did my master's degree. We all went in together and we pitched in personally to pay, to, to commission Stephen Bryant um, to compose the piece. And Stephen Bryant happens to be a really close friend of mine. His wife and I were in grad school together, both in Michigan and in Texas. And, um, and he's become a close personal friend of mine. I was lucky enough to get to go to attend their wedding in Austria, which is where his wife is from. Um, and, and so the piece, Nothing Gold Can Stay, is based on a poem. And the poem is all about what happens when, as the sun rises in the beautiful part, that brief window of time, as the sun begins to rise and the beautiful, there's dew on the grass and that quickly evaporates. And there's also sort of a deeper meaning to that in terms of some of the most beautiful things on this planet don't, don't always last the longest. And, and sometimes that, that sort of manifests itself in us losing loved ones earlier than we feel like we maybe should have. Um, I, I've told this story to the students and I'm not um, trying to make this all about myself, but this past about a month ago, almost a month ago to the date, on December 7th, um, my cousin, who's about my age, uh, lost her 16-year-old son in a car accident. And it's been the, by far the most challenging thing that my family has had to, to deal with thus far. Because, you know, you lose grandparents, and while that's really, really hard and you love them a lot, that kind of is easier somewhat to wrap your head around and to understand. And, and using uh, losing a young child is not so easy to wrap your head around. And so this, this piece is, um, to me, it sort of represents his, the way the, the way the meaning of the piece for me is now has changed from what it originally was because now I very much associate that with his beautiful but short-lived life that he, that he got to have the opportunity to live. So, um, but the students have that, that piece in particular. Playing slow music that lasts a long time requires extremely mature musicians and it usually takes weeks to prepare and we had less than two full days to prepare it and, and these students who are terrific musicians and really stepped it up and, and, um, and I'm so proud of their, the performance that they gave of that piece. So thank you guys again for your beautiful performance of Nothing Gold Can Stay. Um, then the next the piece that you just heard, you might notice is a little different. <laughs> it's by a composer named Ron Nelson who's also composed several different band pieces in his career. And that particular piece uses what he refers to as non-synchronous music where it's not all happening at the same time until the very end when we finally lined up with that. And it's surround sound, band, music, with the antiphonal players that were up in the, uh, in the balconies playing. And that's a fun piece to put together as well. Our final piece on the program, if you love marches, and I love marches, 
you're going to love our final piece of the program, which is Glory of the Yankee Navy, John Philip Sousa, which everyone knows as the March King um, of the United States, also happened to compose some music for musicals and musical comedies. This particular, um, this particular number was actually a march he wrote for a musical called The Yankee Girl, and this is the Glory of the Yankee Navy. We hope that you enjoy our final, our final piece of the program. Thank you so much.